I'm Rakesh Rajani. I work with a wonderful new initiative called Tuaweza, which is Swahili for We, make, we Can Make It Happen, which works in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. Uh, you know, people spend a lot of energy and time trying to make good things happen for poor people. What I try to do is to try to figure out, is it working in practice? So in 2008, I had the luxury of walking around Kenya and Uganda and Tanzania to see how things work on the ground. I came to two main conclusions. On the development side of life, uh, what governments do, what donors do, what NGOs do, uh, it, was, it was very depressing. Things don't really work. You find empty shells. You find veneers of progress. Nobody really, nobody really believes in that work, and it doesn't really work very well at all. So that's the bad news. The good news where I found I found a energy and a vitality and a creativity in what people are doing by themselves. And, uh, and that's what inspired me. And, and I found five key institutions that were really important in people's lives. One was religion, mobile phones, mass media, uh, teachers, and consumer goods. And there was a vitality and vibrancy around how those things work and how people use them to make them work, to solve their problems, to, to get wealthier, to be able to follow their dreams. That was really powerful. So development doesn't work. People are getting on with a set of things that are really working powerfully. So we, if we want to make a difference, we got to figure out how to connect with where the power is. One of the largest changes in East Africa is how ordinary citizens can communicate. If you, if you, came to, if you went to any village in Tanzania 15 years ago, uh, there was no telephone. And so if somebody wanted to, re if you wanted to reach your grandmother in the village, it might take you two weeks and you wouldn't know how to reach her. If she wanted to reach you, she would have no clue how to get to you where you are. Fast forward just 15 years today, and virtually everyone either has direct or indirect access to the mobile phone. You can find out all kinds of things that you could not even have dreamed of 10 years ago. People have information at their fingertips, and people are using phones incredibly much. You also have a lot of innovation. The first mobile banking in the world did not start in New York or Europe or India. It started in Africa. It started in Kenya where now millions of people are every day using the mobile phone to send money and get money, and that's how you do your banking. Uh, all kinds of other services are, are, are appearing on the mobile phone. And for most people in East Africa, the way they're going to use the Internet is not through the computer, but through the mobile phone. In Kenya already, there are 1.8 million Facebook users. In, in Uganda, you can join Facebook and use Facebook free of charge from the most remote village that you can imagine. Now imagine the possibilities when citizens who didn't have an opportunity to get this information and make information and share it can suddenly do so quickly, reliably, fast, and can, you know, you can reach the world in a, in a second. It's, it's brilliant. It's, 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 you, it's unfathomable what is now possible to do. And we need to catch up in, in the development world. If we keep on doing our same old tired things, we're going to be, we're going to make ourselves obsolete. We need to figure out what people are already doing and join that bandwagon. Well, you see, the, the, the beauty of the cell phone is that the content is provided by the citizens. So I can speak in whichever language I want. I can communicate in whatever language I want. I can send the SMS in, in, in the language I want, in the topics I want. You know, in one moment, I may want to know the price of cassava. Another moment, I may want to know how I can get a divorce. The third moment, I may want to know the World Cup soccer score. Fourth moment, I may want to know about the latest scandal. And the beauty of it is that I can do all of that when I want it. I get to decide. Too much of development has been about experts or governments or NGO leaders deciding what you need to know. This turns the world upside down. This way, you get to decide. That 45-year-old woman in a remote village of Sumbawanga in southern Tanzania decides what information she wants to know and what information she wants to generate and share. And, and, and then what you do on radio, there's a media ecology. So what, you, what you do on the mobile phone is linked with what you do, can do on radio. There's talk shows in the vernacular. There's issues that get discussed. There are call-ins. There are Saturday public discussions. And these are broadcasts. So what used to be private conversations between two and three friends and neighbors now become public conversations. If the president has said something that you think is ridiculous, instead of just talking to your neighbor about it, you can talk about it on radio. And your radio station is talking about it in some other radio station, and you're blogging, and you're Facebooking, and it's also on television, and you're writing it on the newspapers through letters to the editor. And suddenly what starts happening is a critical mass, an ecosystem of information appears that allows, that just turns around the entire public debate. 
and authoritarian leaders that used to have the monopoly on what information used to be out there in the public domain no longer do. Even when they try to crack down on it, they can't. So it's in, the, it's in that sense, it's a wonderfully democratic moment. You see, a lot of, lot of the problem in development is that it is so damn boring. Unless you are paid to read this stuff and talk this stuff, no one else will do it. I mean, in my spare time, when I read fiction, I read great stories, I read The New Yorker, I read great blogs, I don't read development stuff because it's so boring. Now, we, we do the same, development in a sense marginalizes itself. If what we try to do is to re reach citizens or give citizens information, that is so deathly boring. And, and that's why it's not so much about giving them budget figures and giving them facts. How many of us, for example, in, in Washington, D.C., look at what our budget figures are? We just don't do that. But what you want to do is tell stories, stories of how change has happened, stories of how people that look like you and me, that people who you identify with, have done remarkable things despite the odds. Those are the stories that inspire us. Those are the stories we feel like saying when you hear remarkable things. The outliers, the slightly odd ones, the slight weirdos, those are the stories that are, that are inspiring, that in a sense have transgressed, have crossed the line. Because if, if, if somebody has made change happen, and if enough of you hear enough of the stories, you start thinking, hey, maybe we could. If they can do it, why not us? The other stories that are really important is that put you, that compare your situation with others. If your school has had teachers who don't do a job teaching this year, last year, and for the previous 10 years, you stop noticing it. But when you hear now that the, the school in the village next door has gotten its act together, 90% of their kids did really well in the exams and went on to university, that the teachers are showing up and working and there's a dynamism in the schools, you start thinking, hold on, if they can have great schools, why not us? What's their secret? What can we do? How can we figure it out? So it's about comparisons and stories that allow you to look at your own situation in a different way with new eyes that will bring the change. Look, we are, we've been stuck. It's like an all broken record. Development is, is, uh, development is in, in one way a story about rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. But the ship has, ship has been sinking for years and what we need is a breakthrough. We don't need little improvements. We don't need tweaking. It's not about incremental change. It's about making a breakthrough, thinking out of the box, and, and not, not trying to fix what doesn't work but rather figuring out what is already working and riding those waves. Citizens have already figured out how, things, how to make things happen. What we need to do is to, is in some sense, we need an imaginative leap ourselves as development practitioners to figure out how we can, what's happening and how we can ride that wave, how we can, like how we can in a sense piggyback onto what's powerful. But citizens also need to do that. Many, I mean, I don't want to romanticize uh, what's happening on the ground. It's not all rosy. It's not all perfect. There's things that could be much better. But what will enable citizens to, in a sense, unleash their potential is being able to make that imaginative break. So more than anything else, we need to be in the imagination business.